The publication of the white paper on the hashtag NSAS report has been generating diverse reactions from members of the public. Also, government officials and their agents have been explaining the state government's position as contained in the published observation and recommendation. Now, we are now being joined via Zoom by a youth representative during the seating of the panel of inquiry into the hashtag NSAS, Renu Oduola and Alabi Oladimeji, an activist and director general of Occupy Progressives Nigeria. I want to say thank you very much, um, the panel, for joining us today here on News Day. And let's start it, let's start it off with you, Renu. Renu, um, we've spoken about this report time and time again. And the last time we spoke was when we had the leaked version of this report come out and everyone celebrated and also commended the panel. But right now, the white paper has actually thrown out quite a lot of inconsistencies between the leaked version and the white paper we have with us right now. What are your reactions to this white paper and the position of the Lagos State government in response to this white paper? Thank you very much for that question. Um, first, I'd like to say that I've been on this same panel to say that we did not even need the panel's report to actually prove to us that um, a massacre happened at the Lekki Gate. Not just at the Lekki Gate, I've always said, but then all over Lagos State. For me, um, I'd like to say that we have a white paper with black content. Mm. And that white paper cannot alter the report of the judicial panel. People have spent close to 13 months, like the Farrow said, on that panel to sift facts, to sift the truth that happened, you know, um, all over Lagos during the NSAS protest. To now turn around and rubbish these people's work as assumptions and speculations. You can almost say that I was justified in leaving the panel, like it was as if I saw something coming. I mean, young people um, and, and uh, the entire Nigerian population have been waiting for a year for panel recommendations. No matter how you feel about some decisions made on that panel, to sit in that courtroom is not easy. To listen to traumatic experiences, stories about what the Nigerian police has done to a lot of Nigerians in this country. You almost shed tears if you have ever been there. Names have been called. The people that committed this much atrocities, like I'd like to say, have, and they're not ghosts, they're not fictitious characters. So why is the Lagos state government cherry picking the truth from a buffet of truths? And, uh, you know, for me, um, I'd like to say that the Lagos state government, uh, not just even me, the panel has said it, the Lagos state government is culpable in these crimes that have been committed by the state during the end of protests. But then we're still expecting that to indict themselves. We're expecting the prosecutors, the people that the people that are presenting themselves as prosecutors to actually prosecute themselves. The white paper, um, again, is a whitewashing, you know, of, of the government. We have seen it happen before. We're Nigerians. We'll continue to see it. If we have people in power who do not have conscience, people who do not care about the people and are only there for, for their own political interests. But if we're in a normal country, would have had, you know, the truth out. But then, like Fela said, we're in a country where our government performs magic. This is government magic. Hmm. Is it? Is it to? Is it to protect human rights that the Nigerian government has succeeded to do? There are a lot of human rights violations every day. Why have our elected leaders look on? In the words of a popular governor, I mean, the governor of Fire he said that they are looking like a bat. Renu. Police is harassing people and all of that. The government has refused to say anything. Renu, for the sake. Last okay. Time. All right. Go ahead. No, 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 no seems to be um, approbating and reprobating at the same time. And it's really unfortunate. You're trying to make it look as if you're on the side of the people. Meanwhile, you are obviously on the side that does not want the people to heal or wish the people were. Well, Renu, thank you so much for that, uh, for your contributions on that. Let's go to Alabi Oladimeji. Now, as an activist and as someone who has seen what has transpired over the last year plus we now have the right white paper, and we also hear reports about some of the panelists or those who sat on the panel whose lives have been put in danger for one reason or another. I want to ask you this question and harp on this fact as well. 
We also know that the Lagos state government has called for a peace walk. How can you reconcile both of these? I'm wondering if there's any way to reconcile both of this or even what your opinion is on um, the peace walk that has been um, called for by the Lagos state government. Um, first of all, I would first, um, like to appreciate our service men that serve Nigeria with all the strength, the Nigerian police and uh, the Nigerian army, the military, because it is not easy for them to uh, ignore the family and uh, uh, guard Nigeria. Um, on the peace work, I think um, the governor has done the right thing, uh, the right direction, because uh, what we need at the moment is uh, to have a peace work with the people that believe in the development and the actualization of the dream of Lagos State. Um, the government uh, made a statement, uh, also statement that we invite every um, a, 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 every youth that believes in a developed um, Lagos to come out and work with them. And I would like to go back to uh, where uh, we said something about the massacre. Um, I would like to start with the definition of massacre. Massacre is the only stimulus of brutal slaughter of many people. I was very surprised that a whole panel, an independent panel was set up since last year, up to now, and what they came up with to report full with errors. They report full with psychographic errors. And these same panels have spent almost 200 million euros on this. And we could not even come up with something. Instead of them to come up with something we can get on, they came up with a lot of questions we should ask. Imagine putting a link that came to uh, uh, imagine putting uh, that solo one on the list. That solo one came in as a witness. He was put on the list. He was compensated. A lot of things um, need to be put on that list, just like uh, names, like DJ, like there's a link in that list, DJ, who is DJ, where is he living, what is he calling, who could he attend? We don't ask anything about it. And the good thing about this thing is that a lot of people that believe in this, um, but we believe in this white people, we believe in this um, panel uh, recommendation. How can you believe in something that has a lot of errors, psychographic errors, but even Mr. Ebony, Mr. Ebony confirms that there is a lot of psychographic errors and a lot of errors in that. It doesn't make sense. All right, Alabi, um, permit me, we've understood your point, um, because this is a discourse, uh, we have a panel here. Uh, let's actually come back to Rino. We'll still get back to you in a moment. But Rino, okay. you've actually just heard Alabi speak about the fact that um, a lot of monies were spent, months, and also valuable time was also invested into this particular process. And at the end of the day, we were talking about typographical errors. We were talking about inconsistency from the panel. And more importantly, key names. Um, some of the best legal minds were actually on that particular panel, being led by Justice Doris Okuobi. Do you think the panel should, at this point in time, come out to defend their good name or their image? Because they seem to be quiet. Thank you very much for that question. And I'd like to start from the fact that the truth needs no defense. The truth is out there. I've always repeated it, even on this platform, that the truth needs no defense. It will come out whether you like it or not. And I heard Alabi talking about how victims, names of schools and all of that should come out. I don't think I know the name of your school. Neither do I know where you graduate. I only even know you from this platform. So it's, it's incredible. It's incredulous that we are asking, we're asking, uh, uh, it, 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 in, 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 I don't know what, what term I would call it, questions that have irrelevance to regarding the death of young Nigerians, not just at the Lekki Togate, but all over Lagos State on the 20th and 21st of October 2020. The Lagos State pathologist came out and said that over 99 dead bodies were recovered in Lagos. Like I said earlier, why are we cherry picking the truth? Why are we trying to gaslight the entire Nigerian citizen into believing that what we saw happened did not actually see? happen now i said that um 
we are in a country where we are performing government magic, right? Um, even the governor talked about the report and said that was a leaked report. It is it is very um, um, consistent that when you're performing a job, when you're writing a document, doing research or anything, you have a lot of errors that you need to correct. Where is the copy of the documents that the panel submitted to the Lagos State Governor? They should release that to the public and let us see what's happening. Like um, um, the, one of the lawyers at the panel said, they were talking about Nathaniel um, Abota or Nathaniel Solomon or something like that. That was his brother that represented him at the panel. That is a, a, a common error that can be made by anybody for BMC members to now come out and start cherry picking the truth. It is somehow, like I said, like I said, and I, and I would like to say this, you know, if the government has anything left of them, because I don't have time to argue with um, um, incorrigible characters. If the government has anything left of them, of this nation, that we're to supposed to say um, we're going on to build a sane nation. The government, this governor has come out to say we're going on a walk of peace. There's no walk of peace without justice. Justice and peace go hand in hand. There's no, whenever you have justice, you always have peace. And if the government has anything left of them, they should do right by the people. The pe people cannot lose their life is been. The question, why we're close to 100 protesters, not, some of them are not even protesters, just citizens that were, that were just unfortunate to be there murdered all over Lagos on the 20th and 21st of October. Now we want to take a walk. If we say we worship God, but then we're saying we worship God, but then we are walking in darkness. We're lying. We're not, we're not practicing the truth. The Bible even says that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Peace is not the absence of war. Renu, peace is the presence of Renu, justice. So, so when there is justice in the land, there's Renu, which way peace. forward? Renu, now, which way forward? forward? The way yeah. forward is that... Um, Nigerian soldiers and the police have killed NSAS protesters at Lake Toge, mm -hmm. and they've removed cops. Now, Nigeria is happening to all of us, 200 million people. Nigeria is happening to all of us. I've said it before that the Nigerian state has no intentions of ending police brutality because they are protecting their political interest. Now, like Ebu Adeboru ICN said, those who received the bullets knew what happened. The doctors who treated them, they know what happened. If the young people want those recommendations to be implemented if we want those recommendations that the panel has stated not this white washing white paper to be implemented we have to vote in a governor or, we, or a government rather oh we do our will it is time for nigerians to activate the office of the citizen that is the highest office in the land not the office of the governor or the pres or president or the senator or anything the highest office in Nigeria is the office of the citizens. Nigeria have to, Nigerians have to wake up right now and see that the people that we have in power, they have not none of our interests at heart. These people are not going to implement the, the recommendation. All right, um, Reno, permit me at this point in time to, to bring in Alabi. Yes. In the past. We know that. Okay, permit me to bring in Alabi right into this discussion also. Alabi, you've heard Reno speak about um, how position on the peace walk. In the, in the interest of peace and in the interest of finding closure, because right now it's a case of how many people died and how many people did not die, and what is being reported, and what, what is truth, and what is fact, and what is fiction right now. Talk to us. How do we find closure, and how do we come to a point whereby we can say, let's find healing for the land? Um, uh, first thing, I would like to uh, bring out a point in where you know, that is not even aware of me. I appreciate that uh, we are putting the draft again. And I would like to also bring out a point in which you say that the citizens need to vote in a governor. So in that statement, you can only say that this is political. And I know uh, the fact that you call this the BMC recruit, uh, the BMC. Uh, is popularly known as the Bahari media retreat. And um, um, I, 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 I would be, I'm going to be honored to also call her as an artist to because I could remember in 2019, she was campaigning for Atiku, she was campaigning for uh, the PDP Lagos State uh, Government Party. This thing is totally political. No, the government has done what is has to be done. In fact, the government came during, on the 20th of October, because the government is out of them. Let us stand up. The government is of the people by the people and for the people. There's no idea if whatever is for the people. You have to dialogue with them. The government come out and let us dialogue. What do you let us talk to you? You guys will just tell it. Now the governor is also coming out of a peace walk. 
you guys should get them. That is where we are going to know it is purely political. The moment you are not trying to dialogue, the moment you are not trying to reconcile with the government, that majority of the people voted, that means that you are purely working for another ideology entirely. Alabi, I think that law, you are gaslighting. I think that you are gaslighting Nigerians. Okay. As a Nigerian citizen, I have the right to actually vote for whoever I want to vote for. The fact that I said that you're a BMC member who has come on the interview to gaslight Nigerian citizens is not it's not the, it's not a false statement. It is actually the truth. A dialogue includes justice. You cannot go on a walk of people without offering justice to the citizens. Stop gaslighting Nigerians. The walk of peace is not an opportunity to dialogue. The panel has been on the, on the, on the, on the seat for a year to actually dialogue. The panel was there. All right, it's easier, it's easier to hear you all if we speak one at a time. This is not a dialogue. Like this is a one-way. The okay. walk of peace is not a dialogue. It's not a dialogue. All right, um, Alabi, 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 hold on. Um, can we just get a little bit of decorum here in the studio so that we okay. can, okay. so that the viewers can Enjoy. understand our perspectives okay. and our points? Um, Alabi, you were trying to make your point. Can you finish up on that so that we can hear from Reno? Simple. I think, as I said before, this uh, what I call in legal states, um, because. One that thing is more like what happened during the uh, in United States during the occupy war uh so where the protester I think the protester for about seven months without wanting to dialogue with the uh, with, with the with the government where they call themselves the nice night is said. This is the same thing happening here. Now I want to have a how do you want to get justice without getting the names of the people, without getting the families of the people, without getting the address of the people? How are we going to make sure that the justice is well done? Are you trying to satisfy your own your own personal ambition, your own personal aim, or are you trying to just talk to for the family? Um, okay, Alabi, uh, permit me at this point to just throw a very, very, very straightforward question that requires a yes or a no. Do you believe okay. that on the 20th of October 2020, people were killed at the Lekki Toll Gate and in Lagos State? According to facts and figures, I don't believe. No, okay, you don't believe. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. I'm going to fact and figures. I don't believe. I'm going to fact and figures. I don't believe. I don't believe in technology. So we're going to allow Renu to, to rebut this uh, part since you, you had your own opportunity to speak. Renu, if you're still there, can you um, give your own last and final remarks um, as to the situation on Thank ground? You so yes. Much. Thank you so much for that. And so Alabi said, according to facts and figures, he doesn't believe that um, <laughs> the Lekki massacre happened. Please, which facts and figures is he relying upon? Has the government done any investigation? Excuse me, you have talked. Um, Alabi, you will do, you, you'll, be, you'll be a gentleman to allow Rin to talk. Please, please, let me go ahead, please. Uh, you can go ahead, Rin, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much. Which facts and figures is Alabi relying upon? The same panel recommendations that is trying to attack. Now, what I would like to say um, in this regard is that the truth needs no defense. The Nigerian soldiers and police officers, like they've always done, even to normal citizens, show that protesters in Lagos on the 20th of October 2020, the panel has come up with recommendations, and we now have them, even if it was the leaked report we have. One, the governor, uh, the Lagos state government, should provide the original documents that were submitted to them, you know, um, last two weeks Monday. Two, so, um, government members, government representative have come out to reinforce, to, to echo what the panel, the white paper actually put out to us. So we're not surprised. We're not surprised that it's a ramshackle white paper. The SAN Woni Koko that represented the Lagos state government has been on a rise TV to say a lot of things, disparaging comments regarding panel members. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohamed, has gone on TV to say a lot of things. So the white paper is not a surprise to a lot of young Nigerians. Thirdly, um, like I said, the truth always needs not to find. We've seen what happened and then we're not expecting, we're not actually expectant of the prosecutors to prosecute themselves. There is no peace without justice. The Lagos State Governor should know that there is no healing without justice. There is no, there is no, there is no coming to dialogue without, with, with, without giving us justice. Alabi was talking about dialogue. We have dialogued several times during the end of protest. The first day we dialogued was at the Lagos State House of Assembly when we went into an emergency oh, plenary session. With the, excuse me, with the House members. We All right, um, Renew, uh, let's, 
let's, secondly, hold on, let's, hold let's, on. Let's, secondly, no, secondly, it's, it's unfortunate we have run out of time. I want to say a big thank you to both Alabi and Reno because it's getting heated here in the studio. But I want to say thank you very much. It's still the opinion talking about the white paper being released by the Lagos State government.